and show mercy and kindness in Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Let us sing, please.
let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you. Turn it on. There we go. Morning, everyone. Morning, Teresa. Uh, so, given the times, we know that many of our family cannot be here to celebrate Byron's life. And so, there are two things that I've been asked to do. One is to read a short poem. And I actually have Brian's son on the phone right now, and he wants to say something. So just bear with the technology just a little. Yes. Um, I thought of you today, but that is nothing new. I thought about you yesterday and the days before that too. I think of you in silence. I often speak your name. All I have are memories and your picture in a frame. Your memory is a keepsake from which I'll never part. God has you in his arms, I have you in my heart. And that's from Arlene, our family in New York. And uh, Ramon, are you there? Ramon, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead. So you have an entire Hello, church everyone. here. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'd just like to say thank you for everyone who support to me and my father. It's a happy day for me and my family. I'm sure it is for the rest of you. I just would like to say my father was a courageous man. The life that he lived touched many of us. And that wave of love that he gave to people who watched over us for forever. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon. Um, he said that I'll also read. When I was a boy, my father's presence was mysterious. My knowledge, wondering where and who he really was. I would spend time with him, but still feeling a distance between us. But I knew I loved him. The unconditional love a son has for his father is immensely vast. But that will soon fade for a great time. The road to becoming a man is hard, and it's a part I must walk down in order to achieve one of my many goals on my list. Almost two decades without Brian, and that feeling is still missing. The feeling of him being around, the hard times when I needed him there. I managed and I got by, got, got by the older I, the more angry I became. Unfortunately, my mother would see the problem ahead on and take most of my damage and emotionally misguided and misunderstanding. My father would reach out to me and like an ignorant fool, plead for conversation. But I was too naive to want to talk to him until the day I finally picked up the phone and he had walked and he had talked and we talked for days and hours after that, catching up on each other's milestones from, from one another and from time to time. That womb my father gave me at a young age would start to heal. And the anger and the pain had to be replaced with a deeper pain in my heart, the pain of sorrow and regret, but a pain of relief for my troubles. I don't know how severe my problem was, and by the time I had figured it out, it was too late. Our last Our last conversation on my birthday, which is January here, um, will stay with me forever, t telling me to stay strong and take care of my mother and sister, to be brave in this harsh world, and don't be afraid of new things in, in your final moments. Here, I'm glad.
glad to have closed this gap and have a stronger bond as men and as a father and son should have. Our journey is only just beginning for his life in paradise. I hope that his pain is eased and, uh, and his troubles are no more. Your last voice note will from I lovely daddy sleeping power. A reading from the prophet Malachi. The Lord God says this, look, I'm going to send my messenger to prepare a way before me. And the Lord you are seeking will suddenly enter his temple. <clears throat> and the angel of the covenant whom you are longing for, yes, he is coming says the Lord of hosts, who will be able to resist the day of his coming? Who will remain standing? Who will remain standing when he appears? Suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth, 
It is not peace I have come to bring, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. Anyone who prefers father or mother to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not take his cross and follow in my footsteps is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it. Anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us have our seats for a minute. The first time I met Brian was when Granny could no longer come to church. And I went one Friday evening to see her at home. And nobody was home but Brian. And he was sitting, I think that's the extension of the kitchen, but the big table there. And he's, I was knocking the gate, and he came and he said, Yes, who are you? I said, Well, I'm the parish priest. Are you so skinny, you is a priest? <laughs> Never forget that first introduction we had. And when he came outside, I said, well, you probably could be one because you have the right size for a priest. And there began our journey and our friendship. And Brian has remained, every time I went to see Granny, very warm and welcoming and shared in, in his own life, in his own way, the goodness and the favors and the mercy of the best family. Today we gather together around the mortal remains of another human person. And today the church celebrates the feast of the presentation of the Lord. That time in history when our Lord Jesus Christ was brought into the temple as is customary for every first meal to be offered to the Lord. And the church celebrates, we bring the mortal remains of our brother Brian into the house of God to pray the rites of Christian burial for his soul and to celebrate the mass of the resurrection as we say to our Lord and God receive receive this son, this brother this friend, there are some seats to the front if you want to come up to the front just obey the seating arrangements and today we gather together to remind ourselves that we too have been presented to the Lord and in this way we are presented again. Our mortal remains are brought before the presence of God as we ask the good Lord to look upon us with his kindness, to look upon us with his mercy, and to welcome the soul of this son, of this brother, into his presence. We believe in praying for those who have gone before us in the Roman Catholic tradition. We believe that the power of Holy Mass appeals to the heart of God, that we cry out to the heart of God and say, viewing this online, for every living person to ask themselves, am I ready for this? Because we always tell ourselves, are going to somebody's funeral. Somebody will be coming to yours very soon. Don't ever forget that, you know. Because we go to funerals and we look at the, the face of the deceased and we have all these expressions and all these lamentations and we never remind ourselves that there am I but for the grace and the goodness of Almighty God. There am I but for the goodness of God. Had it not been for the mercy of God extended to me that I can still breathe the air that God provides, I can still behold the beauty that God has provided, I can still see my loved ones, only the goodness of God. Because to understand and to fathom the ways of God is beyond us. How could you explain that granny has been sick and suffering for so long and granny is still there and Brian gone? It's mystery. Mystery. And mystery is not that we cannot understand. Mystery is rather an invitation to enter into the darkness. To enter into what you do not understand. So that by the power of revelation, by the power of the grace of God, by the power of prayer, by the power of reflection and meditation, God reveals, God reveals the
the bigger picture to us day by day. That all of this is in God's plan. The Bible tells us it is appointed unto every man born of woman to die six times. Is that so? You haven't listened to what I say himself. You haven't correct me. You haven't correct me. To die but once. To die but once. You better prepare for it. You, know? you better be prepared for it. Because in that moment, it's you and your God. Nobody else. You could have a million people in the room. It's you and your God. I have given the last rites to so many people in hospitals with all their family around them. And all that person is experiencing and going through, none of the family could see it or experience it. Only that person. Every time you go to a funeral, you are going to an event that is a dress rehearsal for you. Because someday, very soon, somebody will be doing for you what I am doing for Brian and for me too and we have to be asking ourselves as we journey day by day am I aware of the limitedness of my life you know one of the things that this pandemic is causing us to see how selfish so many people are instead of bringing out the best in us it's bringing out the worst That all that was hidden is coming out. Greed, selfishness, the power struggles, the wanting everything for myself, forgetting that I live in a community and I'm responsible for the well-being of the other. The one thing we must never ever forget is that we are limited beings. We are only here for a time. Don't forget that, you know. Don't ever forget it. Christian faith teaches us that life is a journey. Christian faith teaches us that we are pilgrims journeying towards eternity. And how you embrace that journey is very important. You could embrace that journey very carelessly or taking things for granted. Or you can embrace that journey consciously aware that I have a soul to give an accounting for, I have a God to live for, I am a man and woman of faith, and I have to realize that my life must be pleasing to my creator. I did not come from myself, and I'm not going to live in an island when I'm dead by myself. I'm going to God. And so I want to urge all of us as we gather around the mortal remains of Brian today, when we, you know, we always like to take a look at the deceased face before we, we intern them in the, in the ground or cremate them. When you take a last look, remind yourself again, thank grace and the gift of life. Thank God. Please live your life wisely. Live it for God. Live it for God. Whatever is your religious expression, it really doesn't matter, but live it for God. Live it for God. There is only one God. And this one God has revealed himself to us in the person of Jesus Christ. This one God has become flesh. And this one God says to us, I love you with an everlasting love. I love you. Nobody in their right mind has run from love. You know what one of those fancy fellas say, walk away from love. You know that song? Nobody in their right mind does do that. Everybody does run towards love. Yes. Why are we not running towards God? It's like, you ever see children when they see their parents now go home? Man, they'll run to their parents. They'll run to them and jump up on them. Well, God is our parent. God is our parent. We should be running towards God. He is love. He is the fullness of life. He is the fullness of, of blessing. Jesus describes it as the pearl of great price. Jesus describes it as a dragnet cast into the sea. Jesus describes it as a man finding treasure in a field. 
That is love. That is the love of God. And so I want to encourage all of us. Open your hearts. Open your hearts. More than ever, we need God. Don't ever tell yourself you could live without God, you know. Don't ever tell yourself that. Money does done. House does burn down. Just driving up here, I didn't notice there was a house burned down the road, right on the road there. It's, it's my passenger pointed out to me, and I passed it every day, you know. And I realized, the house, did I look? I said, when the house burned down, I have noticed it's another pass there three times a week already. Because it, it not my business, I'm worrying about it. You see, house has burned down. I always tell the story of how many cars, you know, they bring cars for you to bless, and then they, they so want to please the children, they give the 17 year old son to take a drive and he crash the car. You just buy a car for $300,000, the next day they crash it. See? The one thing that remains forever is God. God. The Bible says there are three things that last. Faith, hope and love and the greatest of this is love i urge all of us let's journey towards the lord because when it comes to dying we all have to get ready for it none of us are going to escape it even i will not escape it there's gonna come a time when i will breathe my last and not because I'm a priest, I will get a lesser or treatment than you, you know. No, no, no. It'd be harsher for me because a greater burden has been entrusted to me. So get it right, brothers and sisters. Uh, I thank God for this best family who is a family of faith. Who is a family of faith. You know, I was saying to Torah when I came to do the Mass last Friday, home there for them, I went to pray with Granny after. And to my great surprise, she understand everything I said. She said, Amen. When we finish praying. She understood the prayer we prayed. She shouted out, Amen. She has not lost her faith. She has not lost it. So I want to encourage us. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while you have the strength. Seek the Lord while you have the privilege seek the Lord while you still have your senses. Seek the Lord while you still can. May God bless you all and renew your faith and to you, Torah, and your family give you the strength as you lay the mortal remains of a brother to rest. May God surround you by his spirit and guard you by his power and remind you moment by moment life is change, not ended. Let us stand, please. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come. That the weaknesses I see in me will be swept away by the power of your love. Hold me close, hold me close, and let your love.
which earth is given and human hands have made, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, King and Master of all creation, for it is through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord our God, we ask that you will accept us and receive us, our lives, our offerings, our prayers, all that we have and we are, we present to you, for we trust in the saving power of Jesus Christ, your Son. Wash away my sins, Lord, and the sins of all of your people. Cleanse me and cleanse all of us, we ask of you. Thank you. My dear people, let us all pray that this your sacrifice and mine may be made acceptable to the Lord God and the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name. For of the the Lord is holy children. Amen. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, Father, for the salvation of your son and your servant, Brian Best, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a savior and a loving one may find in Jesus a merciful and gracious judge who lives and reigns forever and ever.
You are indeed holy, O God, and all you have created is right to give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Father, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the sacred body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For it was on the night before Jesus went to die for us, while he himself was having a meal with his disciples for the last time, Jesus got up from the table. He took the bread and he blessed it. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Oh, come, let Dominic, Jude, Francis, Anthony, 
Joseph, Pat Rippio, Benedict, Claire of Assisi, Catherine of Siena, John the 23rd, John Paul the Second, Teresa of Calcutta, and all the martyrs and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. and our hands and our voices as we dare to pray formed by the divine teaching of the church for the coming of the Father's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, please, loving Father, from every evil, and graciously grant us your peace in this our day, that by the help of your loving mercy, you will protect us and keep us free from all unnecessary worries and anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my own peace I give you. Lord, we ask you to please look not upon our sins, but upon our faith and the faith of the church universal, and to graciously grant unto all of us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. In these times that we journey and we take a moment to pray for that peace. Give us your peace, Lord. The peace that comes from the risen Christ. The peace that will heal and save and transform our time, our country, our communities, our families. Give us your peace, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world. Jesus Christ, the bread of life, who takes away our sins and the sins of our world, happy and blessed are all of us who are called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring us all unto life everlasting. Amen. We welcome all of you to this time of prayer. The receiving of Holy Communion is only for practicing members of the Roman Catholic community. If you know you are not supposed to come to the table of the Lord, please do not come.
thankful for the gift of Jesus who comes to us through the word, who comes to us, to us through the fellowship, who comes to us in Eucharist, who comes to us by the power of the Spirit, who comes to us in the quiet moments of our lives. Thank you for Jesus who paid the price to make us your children, who is our hope and who is our strength. As we journey, Lord, renew us. As we journey, Lord, refresh us. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer.
is the way it is because people have forgotten who we are. We are just nothing. The Bible says we are like the dew that forms on the grass and the flowers overnight. As soon as the sun comes up, it disappears. Dust is what we are. All our boasting, all our claim to fame, we become nothing. I always tell the story when I was in San Fernando that did the funeral of this man was about five, 500 pounds. We had to move the pews to, for the coffin to come up. When they cremated him, he came back in a jar just like this and hold it in my hand. That's what we are, dust. And yet we fight it, we cuss it, we quarreling, we thief it, we lying. For what? To make the world crazy. Remember that. So the next time you want to cuss up your neighbor, remind yourself, I'm just dust. Shut your mouth. Eat some humble pie. And remind yourself, I am nothing but dust. Dust to dust, earth to earth, and ashes to ashes. In the show and certain hope that together with all who are dying in Jesus Christ, we shall be raised to glory with him. Into your hands, Lord our God, we commend the mortal remains and the very soul of your son, Brian. It is with thanksgiving that we have prayed today, knowing that you are the God of favor. You are the God of love and kindness. Welcome his soul into your presence and when all the redeemed grant him the privilege to sit around the eternal banqueting table to enjoy this heavenly banquet that you have provided. It is our prayer that when Lazarus is born no longer, that Brian will find rest and joy. We are thankful for all the blessings you shared with him and the many lives that he touched during his journey. Bless his family, come for them and give us the assurance of God that we shall see each other again in glory. Eternal rest grant unto Brian best, O oh Lord. Let the perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. O oh God of all kindness, be our strength. Lord, as we journey, do not ever leave us, but be present with us. Remind us that you are the God of favor and faithfulness. And as we have prayed, strengthen our faith and give us every blessing we need to live in your presence and proclaim your goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our time of prayer has ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage. The grapes of God are stored. He has loosed the vapor lightning. Of his terrors the sword. His truth is marching on. Singing, singing, singing.
Yeah.